Before reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer our respectful obeisances to the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Narayan. To Narayan Narayan, we see the supermost human being, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, Srila Vyaste, the author, and to Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Itinamani, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pachanane Nivisesha Sunyavari Paskita De Satarane. So it's this, we're starting a new chapter. Chapter 4 of the third canto, Vidura approaches Maitreya, and uh, <clears throat> it's text 1. So, <clears throat> Uddhava Uvacha, Uddhava Uvacha, Bata, Bata, Te, Te, Tad, Anu, Anu, excuse me, Anu Jata, Anu Jata. Bhuktva, 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 Cha, Cha, Varunim, Varunim, Toya, Toya, Vibram Sita, Vibram Sita, Yana, Yana, Duruktai, Duruktai, Marma, Marma, Paspritsuhu, 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 Uddhava Vacha, Uddhava Vacha, Atate Tad, Anugyata, Atate Tad, Anugyata, Bhuktva Pitva Cha Varunem, Bhuktva Pitva Cha Varunem, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Duvukta Marma Prasvi Puksu, Duvukta Marma Prasvi Puksu, Uddhava Uvacha, Uddhava Uvacha, Atate Tad Anugyata, Atate Tad Anugyata, Bhutva Pitva Cha Varunin, Bhutva Pitva Cha Varunin, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Durukta Marma Pashprisuhu, Durukta Marma Pashprisuhu, Purva Vacha, Atate Tad Anugyata, Atate Tad Anugyata, Bhutva Pitva Cha Varunem, Bhutva Pitva Cha Varunem, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Durukta Marma Paspritsu, Durukta Marma Paspritsu, Someone else? Ura Urava Vacha Urava Vacha Atta Te Taranu Jata Atta Te Taranu Jata Putwa Pitwa Chavarunim Putwa Pitwa Chavarunim Taya Vima Vibram Sitajman Jana Taya Vibram Sitajana Durutai Mama Pasprisu Durutai Mama Pasprisu Uddhava Uvacha, Uddhava Uvacha, Atate Tad Anugyata, Atate Tad Anugyata, Uddhva Pitva Chavarunim, Uddhva Pitva Chavarunim, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Taya Vibram Sita Jnana, Durutaya Narma Pasprishu, Durutaya Narma Pasprishu, Uddhava Uvacha, Uddhava Uvacha, Atat 
Translation by His Divine Grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Thereafter, all of them, the descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja, being permitted by the Brahmanas, partook of the remnants of Prashad and also drank liquor made of rice. By drinking, they all became delirious and bereft of knowledge. They touched the core of each other's hearts with harsh words. Please repeat. Thereafter, Thereafter all of them, all of them the descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja, the descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja, being permitted, being permitted by the Brahmanas, by the Brahmanas, partook of the remnants of Prashad, partook of the remnants of Prashad, and also drank liquor, and also drank liquor, made of rice, made of rice. By drinking, by, by drinking, drinking, they all became delirious. They all became delirious and bereft of knowledge. And bereft of knowledge, they touched the core of each other's hearts. They, they touched, touched the core of each other's hearts with harsh words. With harsh words. Um, purport um, by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. In ceremonies, sorry, in ceremonies, when Brahmanas and Vaishnavas are sumptuously, sumptuously fed. The host partakes the remnants of foodstuffs, foodstuffs after the guests have given uh, their permission. So <coughs> the descendants of the Vrishni and Bhoja formally took permission from the Brahmanas and ate the prepared foodstuff. Shatras are permitted to drink at certain occasions. So they all drank a kind of light liquor made of rice. By such drinking they became delirious and bereft of sense. So much so they forgot their relationship with one another and used harsh words which touched the cores of each other's hearts. Drinking is so harmful that even such a highly cultured family becomes affected by intoxication and forget themselves in a drunken state. The descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja were not expected to forget themselves in this way. But by the will of the Supreme it happened and thus they became harsh towards one another. So the verse again is, Thereafter all of them, the descendants of Vrishni and Bhoja, being permitted by the Brahmins, partook of the remnants of Prashad, and also drank liquor made of rice. By drinking, they all became delirious and bereft of knowledge. They touched the cores of each other's hearts with harsh words. Om again, Kamaram Dasha, Kananjana Sarakaya, Chaksodamaitam Jaina, so this is, uh, you know, a pastime that if you don't have a spiritual master, 
like in the Mar Bar, if you're reading just the Mar Bar, it's not even a full, it gives you a partial story of it. And there are a lot of pastimes like that in the Mar Bar. And so one can get the wrong impression about what this particular pastime is about. So what's happening is that, um, and, and again, this is another example of where things in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, they're, laid, they're, they're mentioned, and then later on, it's explained more fully. Um, like when they do a list of the incarnations, and then later on in the Bhagavatam, this whole cantos or parts of cantos that are on, like say, Nushingya Dev or, or uh, the various other incarnations. And uh, with the creation, there's a, a, a beginning description in the first canto, and then later in the second and third, there's some. And there's even more, I think, if you would consider the cosmology in the fifth canto. So, in this case, this particular pastime is mentioned here, and in the beginning of the eleventh, the first chapter of the eleventh canto, Purukit Maharaj asks Sugadev Goswami, why, uh, why did the, uh, the members of the Yadu why were they, the Brahmins cursing the members of the Yadu dynasty? They were all such pious and charitable uh, and highly uh, cultured uh, individuals. Why did they curse them? And, and why did they um, have difficulties with one another? What was the, why were they becoming so angry at each other? Um, and um, the answer goes back to, to a pastime uh, prior to all of this. Here we're talking about where or in the 11th canto, it's talking about how the Lord is preparing to wind up his uh, terrestrial pastimes to go back to Godhead, you know, and back to the spiritual world, as if he ever left. But, um, and he wants all of his associates to come along. He doesn't want to leave behind any remnants of his, um, of his family. And there's several reasons for that. I can quickly mention some of them. Um, one is, is that the, they were so powerful that uh, no one could defeat them. And he was concerned, well, the Lord that is, that they would become intoxicated with that. And their descendants also could misuse, oh, I am a descendant of this one, or I'm a descendant, I'm directly a descendant of Vishnu. And, uh, uh, certain types of sahaja mentality can develop. It could be a total misuse of power. So, and and their, their presence created a, another burden on the earth, and he had come to eliminate this burden uh, on, of the earth of these atheistic leaders, these kings. And he did that in so many ways in his various pastimes, um, like with Jarasandha, you know, the reason he was fighting him 17, 18 times because he would assemble another army and he could destroy all those demons and then he'd bring in some more and he could destroy all those demons. And in this way, he was eliminating all of these very powerful atheistic people which create a burden on Mother Earth. It's said that the greatest sin one can create is to lie. Yeah. And that is a tremendous burden on the Earth. She doesn't like supporting liars, or those who are misusing and exploiting the resources for their own personal sense gratification instead of using it for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so, um, what happened is, um, I, I find this very interesting because, I mean, I can, you know, you can, there's so many opinions on various aspects. This is the type of pastime that could literally, you could have a seminar for like weeks and discuss it. Um, and never really have a, because this is like, I, you know, I'm reminded of Grandfather Bhishma, what he said uh, on better vows to you to steer Mars, because, you know, why did, why did all this have to happen? Why did Jopati have to be, you know, humiliated in that way? Why did you, you know, why did we have to, um, be exiled and lived in, in, in a... Uh, why do all these people have to die for us? 
Yeah, that was Eudistia's main concern. So I could sit on the throne. He, it, it, it really was disturbing him. And Bhishma's answer is that no one can understand the activities of the Lord. Not any of these sages that are that are here assembled, like Narada Muni, Vyasadeva, and so on. Not even Lord Brahma, who's the most intelligent person in the planet. I mean, he created all of this universe. He created the human body, which is a, 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 a masterpiece of biological, you know, machinery. And, um, and they can't understand the Lord's plans. And sometimes you don't understand the Lord's plans for many lifetimes. It may not be revealed, the whole full story of it, what, what is actually taking place now. He's setting, and, and, and so it can be a challenge in, in the beginning. It's a challenge for, say, new devotees or for people that are um, not strong in their faith or are looking for reasons to be faithless. It can be a challenge that, um, look at this. I mean, his own family, they fought with each other. And he, he then later on, and, and the story goes, he and Balaram killed him. They, they go in and kill him. And why? What is that? What kind of God is that? That, that you know, and it can create a lot of doubts. And it's a difficult pastime to understand. But when you understand it in the light that, okay, Srila Jiva Goswami says about this particular pastime that one aspect of it is that Krishna wanted to show that even Krishna's own descendants, who were very powerful and strong, and had could dominate the planet for a long time, even they cannot stay forever. Nothing is permanent, no matter what you achieve in this material world, no matter how much power you achieve in this material world, you, everyone is susceptible to, you know, birth, death, old age, and disease. Everyone, the changing uh, nature of this material world, everyone has to give this place up. No matter what you accomplish, no matter how much control you have over the planet, you're not the supreme controller. And even, and even, Krishna's, even Krishna's family would not be able to stay here permanently. He didn't want them also to set an example that he thought it was a good thing that they stay behind. He doesn't want people to loiter in the material world. He wants us to get in, I mean, excuse me, he, you know, now that we're here, he wants us to do our business and get out, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said. It's like, uh, it's like the stool room. You go in, you do your business, and you get out. You don't linger. Although I, I did, I've given this example before, but there was a, a Panahati festival in Atlanta a couple of years ago, and they had these brand new air conditioned, um, what do you call them, porta potties with a shower and everything. And it was air conditioned and it was very hot. And, and you go into this porta potty, and okay, so you've done your business, but it's time to leave, but, but it's air conditioned. You know, maybe I could just, you know, put my tea lock on. <laughs> you know, you start to linger and loiter. The, the idea is you don't loiter in the material world, and he didn't want his own family members to loiter. Now, the reason this all happened was when the these uh, like Samba, Pajunya, Aniruddha, all of these members of the Adam uh, family, when they were younger. Uh, there had been a, 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 pro a program, a ceremony, with all the sages had come uh, to Vasudev's house and performed some rituals for uh, purification of the house and so on. I don't remember the exact details of it. There was some name for it. And um, so the sages had left and went to a place that begins with a P, and I can't remember the name of it right now. It's not the place where they all had this battle. It's another place. And so all these sages, like Narada Muni, Kashapa Muni, all these powerful sages are there. And the, the second generation, let's put it that way, the second generation, um, kind of thought, 
they were kind of like being rebellious against their the, the, their parents' generation, and it's, they thought it seemed a little stuffy, and the whole thing was kind of like overdone, and they were kind of in a uh, rebellious stage. I mean, it, and that's the way it's described that they wanted to, you know, play a trick on these sages, and you don't you don't be frivolous um, with powerful spiritual personalities. I mean, I, I, there's a very uh, moving lecture of Srila Prabhupada's, I think it's the installation of Radha Dwarkadish, uh, Rukmini Dwarkadish. And at the end, he, his voice gets very broken up and he's crying and he says, be careful, you are dealing with Krishna. Don't be, uh, don't become casual. He doesn't say that, but that was the essence of it. Don't become casual, because with casual, when you're casual, there's casualties. You'll make mistakes, and these mistakes are serious. You don't be frivolous. And so they were being frivolous. You know, I, I also, I, I, I just want to, before I get too far into it, I, I had an experience um, it was about 1972, and um, I was supposed to be in an, an, an initiation ceremony. I had been in the Brooklyn Temple, and now I was traveling with Rupanuga, who had taken sannyas. And he was the GBC of the whole East Coast, but not Brooklyn. And he sent me there, and he told me I could, he, he, he gave a note that, you know, probably could give me initiation, but I, I never pursued it. I wanted to, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see what this meant, and I wanted to see what was going on. Because a lot of the people who were getting initiated were people that I had joined with, or joined just a little bit before me, or just a little bit after me. So I, I wanted to see, and I knew that. And I wanted to see what this meant, and how Prabhupada was. And so, and one thing that really struck me was, and I wish I could remember the actual things that were, um, why people were laughing, and then why he, what, and, but I don't remember that, but I, what happened was, while he was giving out the names, there was always these reactions like, oh, oh yeah, ah, and ooing and on. And then one point they gave some devotee a name and everyone laughed. And Prabhupada said, why are you laughing? This is not humorous, this is not funny. You do not know what is funny. You do not know humor. I will teach you what is humor. He said it very strong. So then, uh, he did a couple of more names. And, and he kept reminding people, this does not have any meaning that you are somehow of this quality of Krishna, or you're this, like this particular uh, devotee. It's a spiritual name to help you remember, to remain Krishna conscious. So, but devotees would always link that to the, somehow or other, to the personality. And so he did a few more names, and then he gave a devotee a name, and then Prabhupada said, now you can laugh. And everybody oh. cracked up. Okay. So he was teaching us. But it was a very serious moment, and he didn't want frivi frivolity. He wanted people to take it seriously. You're take, making a vow in front of the representative of this disciplic succession that goes all the way back to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because Krishna himself spoke the first four verses of the Bhagavatam, which was the, you know, the chapter of uh, to, to Lord Brahma. That is the beginning. And then it's being expanded upon. So, I, I, I really took that to heart. You know, I could see how this was very serious. So in this case, these the 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 the, the second generation of the Yadus and the Boja dynasty were now, you know, being like teenagers and being frivolous. And so they dressed up Samba as a woman and uh, made it appear like she was pregnant. And they, oh great sages, uh, what um, what Child, what, what, uh, what sex, what uh, will this 
woman have, a, a, a girl or a boy? And the sage just said, neither. She will have a club that will be the death of all of your dynasties, an instrument for your death. And they were like, all of a sudden, the joke was over. They, all the color in their face drained, and they were just, whoa. We, we just really stepped in it. You know, we're in trouble. And they lift up the sari, and they see an iron club. They're, they, they're like besides themselves, they're trembling. And they immediately race back to Urbasana. And they tell Urbasana the whole story. And is not happy with them. And, and they could feel, they could feel in the air the power of this curse. The Brahmins were very powerful in the, the energy of it. They could feel it on them. And it's, am I, am I, their first instinct was, Urbasana, I don't want to, I'm not criticizing, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, I mean, obviously hindsight is 2020. But this was already, everything at this point is happening under Krishna's um, internal energy. This is what Krishna wanted to happen. And this is the way he wanted it to happen. I mean, you know, it could have been what, like, people will say, well, why didn't he just send a, a beautiful, you know, spiritual airplane or chariots and, you know, Guru's friends and they all fly back to their various planets. Why not do it that way? Why do it like this? Because he, you know, he wanted to teach many lessons. And whether we fully understand them all at this point, you know, you, we can't, you know, understand Krishna by just reading the books and 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 learning the path, you know, memorize them, or, you know, by speaking about them, by glorifying them, and understanding them, or trying to understand them with faith and devotion, they will be revealed, we'll have realizations. But we'll never, never really understand Krishna. I mean, even he, when he stops to consider himself, he, he's already expanded some more. So it's, a, it, it's an ever-increasing, uh, 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 volumes of knowledge. I mean, I, I'm thinking already that in my mind, like that, you know, we just like I just described in the first few chapters, we got the, uh, the uh, something about this incident, and then later on it's explained in the 11th canto. Well, then what's later on after that? There must be more cantos, a bit more, more. Uh, glorification. Uh, Ananta Sesha is constantly glorifying the Supreme Personality of God, its pastimes, and all of his qualities with unlimited hoods from since the beginning of creation. And he hasn't repeated one. So there must be much more. So Ugrasena decides that we're going we're gonna to destroy this club. And he, t he tells them to, you know, break it up into pieces and then ground it down into power. And they work really hard. They're really, they're really, they can feel this is really serious. We, we can't, you know, we got to do something about it. I mean, that, not thinking that maybe they should go and throw themselves at their mercy and beg for forgiveness. I don't know what, or can we do some atonement? No, let's destroy the weapon. Like we can destroy the Brahmin's curse. I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work. That would be my opinion at the moment. But who am I to say? So, but anyway, it was part of the... So they ground it into powder and they throw it into the ocean. And it's washed, the powder is washed ashore and it begins to grow as canes. And there's one piece of metal that didn't get ground up. And a fish swallowed it. And then somehow or other... This hunter by the name of Jara, with a long A, um, he gets a hold of that piece of metal and turns it into an arrowhead. And so, uh, so now Krishna's getting ready to wind up his pastimes, and he tells them that it's time we've done our business. 
He tells the remaining descendants of the of Kalava, Boja, Vishni dynasties, and we're um, and it's a whole long list of all the different members. And um, so what I want you to do is to go to a place by the name of Prabhas. And I want you to worship the demigods, do Abhishek's, and give in charity to the Brahmins, and um, have, um, and, and perform all these different um, cleansing and purification processes, because we're preparing to go back home. And, and, and to he, and then it says um, there that, Sugadev, I believe, is speaking at that point. Or maybe not. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that um, they went across, they took a boat across the ocean. I don't know where exactly what that, maybe part of the Indian Ocean or something. And then they arrived to this place on the banks of the Saraswati, I think it was. If I remember. Anyone can correct me if I'm late. But, um, so they, the Brahmins, like it says here, they prepared this feast. And now, yes, but, uh, it is true that Kshatriyas uh, are permitted to take liquor, but, you know, they were doing these uh, um, offerings to demigods and offering in charity the Brahmins preparing for the Lord's and winding up his pastimes. Preparing to go back to the to the supreme back to their uh, respective places because some of them were demigods, some of them were eternal associates, and yet they they thought it was okay to drink some liquor. So they had a sort of casual mentality about it, and so that created the mayhem. And is the class time? When is the class time over? Okay, so the rest of this pastime can be told later. Um, is there anything that someone would like to add or have questions about? Yes? Yeah, when you were reading that, uh, this question that you struck me that how, the, just like how the Yadus were bewildered when they started to attack each other. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also did that once. So, <coughs> the South India dog, when uh, one of his, uh, his uh, servant was held captive by this uh, nomads. And uh, when Kedi Mahaprabhu went to rescue him, so they wanted to attack him. And at that time, by mystic potential, they all started to see Kedi Mahaprabhu on each other. And they started attacking each other when they all died. Oh, really? Yeah. It's happened in South India also. So similarly, he was also a river and a river and they you know, recognized them over the who? Yadus. Yadus, yeah. Well, that's what, yeah, that's where it's going to go now. They're going to, and you know, it's like it says here, they were struck with harsh words that, you know, hit the core of their hearts. And there's an expression. Uh, and of course, now the, arrow, the bow and the arrow wouldn't work. You could use a bullet and a gun. But uh, once the uh, arrow is released from the bow, there's no taking it back. And once you've spoken the words, you can't take them back. So we have to be very careful about how we deal with other Vaishnavas or other... Well, well I, I myself, I'm an aspiring Vaishnava. Say I'm a Vaishnava, it's like ludicrous. I'm aspiring to be a Vaishnava. And, but we have to be very careful. Even what we, have to, what we say to family members who aren't... Uh, practicing Krishna consciousness or, or the non-devotees, you have to be careful and think before we speak. And because, you know, you, you can't take back those words. And, and they, they can be very, very hurtful to people. So, um, and that's what happens. They, they, they just start... Um, and I went on, to, since these garlands are going around, I want to mention that... Um, that uh, you have to be careful about things like this, that um, these garlands were on the deity. And th sometimes these people, like this one Sanyasi was talking about how he saw an incident where people started like playing with the, the garlands in a kind of, you know, 
with frivolous way. And it's actually offensive. You have to be very careful what you do with the paraphernalia of the Lord and prasadam. So, um, yeah, and they didn't recognize one another. They didn't recognize Krishna and Balaram. Krishna, actually what happens is, they start hitting each other. First of all, they're, they're fighting with weapons. And they, they all have elephants and chariots and with horses. They're, they're riding on, on donkeys and other human beings. And, um, and so they start... Um, then they're, and they're shooting each, each other with weapons and clubs and they run out of their weapons. So now they grab these very hard canes and as soon as they touch them, they become like steel or iron. I think it was iron. It felt like iron. Like the beginning of the Kali Yuga. And they start hitting each other with these... Uh, and so Krishna and Balaram see this and they go into the crowd and try to stop them and they don't recognize Krishna and Balaram and they grab the Krishna and Balaram, grab the, the canes themselves, and they beat them all. They beat all of them to death. They were personally killed by Krishna and Balaram. Mm -hmm. Then Balaram sits down on the shore of the ocean and meditates, and uh, or the shore of the river, and meditates and transforms himself to the supreme abode. And then there's the story of Krishna sitting down under the people of G. And um, he's sitting very casually there, resting. And what's interesting that, that this hunter by the name of Jarrah, he has the arrow and he happens to show up. And he mistakes Krishna's lotus foot for a deer. Now, the, many of the commentaries say that how is that possible? This happened at sunset and now there's something like 560 million dead bodies. There's a flood of blood. And this hunter, what would a deer be doing in that area? Deer are very peaceful. They've been chased away. What is the hunter doing there? It's all part of the Lord's you know, internal potency. And he hits his foot with the arrow that is from the club. And it doesn't pierce, it just touches it and is laying there. He immediately then looks and recognizes that it's, you know, the forearm form of the Supreme Personality. He got it and he runs over and he says, oh, I, I have made such an offense. He starts to glorify him with really beautiful transit. This man is a a, a murderer, he's, a, he's a, a hunter, and but he all of a sudden has these beautiful per, uh, words for the Supreme Personality of God, and he you know, falls down at his feet, and there are the personification of all of Krishna's weapons, hmm. like the Sudhasan Chakra and, and the, the club and so on, and he forgives him immediately and says, this is all right, this was part of my pastimes. And then he said, a chariot arrives for him, or a ch either a chariot or a plane. And this hunter, Jara, goes back to Vaikuntha. Now I heard one sannyasi um, recently, and I, I don't know, I'm, but he, he, he said that Jara was someone else in his previous life. And... Why? What? Why? Actually, this actually I heard it was somebody different. Mm -hmm. So that therefore, I'm, I would be careful about it. But um, it would be understandable. I would, you see, I'd like to really know, you know, from, who who, and um, that would be what the reason why he immediately his spiritual transcendental knowledge awoke and he started to glorify him with beautiful slogans and. Um, and then Krishna, um, he, um, he just, he, well, first Daruka arrives, his chariot driver, and he's, oh, he's just crushed. He knows what this means. And, and the chariot has arrived. It's floating in the air. And Krishna is rising up to the chariot. 
and, it, and you have to stay behind to look us. And do not worry, you will join us. But you, I, you have to do a few things for me. You have to go back to Dwarka uh, and tell the, the wives and the children and the elders what has happened. And you get, have to get them out of there because soon the whole city will be consumed by the ocean. Prabhupada says the purport is uh, Jarai is actually Brigu, Rashi. That's what I was going to say, is Brigu. It says in Prabhupada's birth to it? Or? Oh, the one I just read, not the one I just read, further down. Is it in the 11th canto? Or the 11th canto. Well, yeah, Prabhupada didn't write that. but um, And I didn't read that when, in the particular copy I had. I heard someone say it, though, in a class. He said it was Brigham, and it was his punishment for kicking Vishnu. Mm. I heard the punishment, the, the curse was that Lakshmi uh, was so angry because he was a Brahmin, that therefore Brahmins will always be poor. Mm. Or if they have Lakshmi, they'll, they'll leave Chanchala. So, and so he, he he's, but he's very upset and he does it, and then Vishnu leaves. So that, what, what verse is that purport? The 11th canto, 6th chapter, 35th verse. Oh, I, I didn't read that one. Okay. So that, that supports it then. So I wasn't sure if this was one of, you know, somebody's just speaking. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.